So throughout the course of the CNN debate between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, it was very clear that he is painfully out of touch. Now, I think that he projected confidence and decisiveness qualities that people look for in a leader, unfortunately, because I was hoping that he would implode at this debate. Nonetheless, um, you know, he, he did come across as someone who was more sharp than regular. I'm not sure what his staffers did to prepare him for this debate, but whatever they did, it worked. But still, one thing that Joe Biden can't hide from the public is just how out of touch he is, how broken our political system is, and how he is unaware of all of the ways in which it is broken. So at this debate, you know, knowing that it's coming down to the wire and if he's going to win, he needs young voters. He needs Bernie Sanders supporters in order to beat Donald Trump. Well, he made a pitch to us. Now, it's funny because in before he made his pitch to us, he said this about, you know, revolution versus reform. People are looking for results, not a revolution. Now, that is just factually incorrect. We want a revolution because anything short of a revolution isn't going to solve the issues that led to Donald Trump. Like, more neoliberalism, more incrementalism isn't going to quell all of dis the widespread dissatisfaction and desperation that Americans currently feel. So, to say that we don't need to have a revolutionary response to campaign finance reform, a revolutionary response to healthcare and the student loan crisis and global pandemics... It really communicates to us just how out of touch you are. And sure, like the bubble that Biden is, is in, you know, it leads him to believe that Americans don't want a revolution. The rich people he hangs around with, his donors don't want a revolution. But ordinary Americans can't accept anything but a revolution and not just any kind of revolution, a very specific revolution where the working class actually is empowered and they have rights and purchasing power, right? So he just, he doesn't get it. He's painfully out of touch. And he was asked to make an appeal to Bernie Sanders supporters. And this was genuinely embarrassing because this attempt, it just communicates to me that he may be worse than Hillary Clinton and her half-assed attempt to appeal to Sanders supporters back in 2016. But look what he tries to say to convince us that we should vote for him. Character of the nation is on the ballot. It goes well beyond whether or not... Senator Sanders and I both agree we need... Health care should be a right, not a privilege. We both agree we have to give deal with student debt. We both agree we have to deal with education and access to education. We both agree that we deal that we have a new green deal to deal with the existential threat that faces humanity. We disagree on the detail of how we do it, but we don't disagree on the principle. We fundamentally disagree with this president on everything. That was really bad. That was really, really bad. First of all, um, he said, we both agree that we need a new green deal. sad <laughs> just pathetic um first of all just saying that you need a green new deal that doesn't mean anything to us you're taking the name of the green new deal or as he calls it the new green deal and you're attaching it to your your milk toast incremental approach to climate change when we can't afford an incrementalist approach to climate change if we want to save the planet keep it habitable for generations to come we have to be absolutely comprehensive in our approach. And his total climate change proposal costs $1.7 trillion. Now, just looking at the cost alone, that doesn't tell you much. But when you think about all of the things that we have to change in order to make ourselves prepared to deal with climate change and mitigate it and adapt to it, I mean, that just is a little bit of a hint of what he's offering not nearly enough. And a Green New Deal, I need people to understand what this is. It's not just a policy proposal. It is an idea, right? So it's basically a blank slate and politicians can fill it in with whatever they want. Hence why people like Amy Klobuchar said, oh, I support the Green New Deal. But in actuality, the Green New Deal doesn't mean anything unless you look at the details. So anyone can say they support a Green New Deal, but that is meaningless unless you dive into the details. And when you look at the details, of Joe Biden's Green New Deal, it's not going to suffice. Not only that, ignoring his Green New Deal, he doesn't support a ban on fracking. He's taking money from fossil fuel executives. In fact, one of them held a fundraiser for him a day after his climate change town hall on CNN. 
So you've got to understand that just saying that he supports the Green New Deal doesn't mean anything. The devil is in the details. And on top of that, he claimed that, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters should support him because both him and Bernie believe health care is a right. Now, this irritates me to no end because corporate Democrats have been saying this. Oh, we all believe that health care is a right. They've literally co-opted the language that proponents of Medicare for all use. No, you, you can't say that you believe health care is a right. Joe Biden's health care plan would leave 10 million people out. So, if something is a right, what does that mean? What are the implications of a right? You can't be denied access to that right. Everyone has it because it's a right. So to say that healthcare is a right, but yet you don't believe that everyone should have it, that it should be free at the point of service and universally accessible, it's insulting. You're lying. You're patting us on the heads and you're saying you support our policy, but you're just paying lip service to it. Saying healthcare is a right now has been effectively meaningless because corporatists have co-opted that language. Tom Perez says healthcare is a right. Corporate Democrats say healthcare is a right. So for you to just say healthcare is a right, that means absolutely nothing. I don't believe that you believe healthcare is a right if you don't support a single payer Medicare for all system where healthcare is free at the point of service. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be Medicare for all. I think that's easiest because you just expand on an existing framework that actually functions. Medicare, not Obamacare, which has been gutted in a million different ways from Republicans in the courts. Like if you if you make it so that way healthcare is free at the point of service, I'll believe you. We can disagree on specific details here and whatnot. But if you literally don't believe that healthcare should be free when you show up to a doctor and you pay zero dollars, you can't say it's a right because that means that if you are a homeless person and you don't have a nickel to your name, it's not going to be free. Therefore, it's not a right. Or, you know, if you have a sickness, an illness, and you need to see a doctor and you have insurance, but you can't afford the $35 copay, is it really a right? No. So Joe Biden's appeal here, it, it just it shows me that he doesn't get it. Like he doesn't realize what's at stake here. And with how many young people are against him, he doesn't understand that they're going to stay home. Like, Democrats have got to grapple with the fact that we're not just trying to convince people who are young to not vote third party. Like, mass amounts of people are going to stay home and they don't get it. They're still not adapting. They're not offering voters anything. The same exact thing happened in 2016 and they haven't adapted. They're not responding accordingly. It's not about trying to not get people to vote for Donald Trump. It's not about trying to convince the people that came out to support Bernie in the primary to vote for the Democrat in November and not vote third party. Like, large swaths of voters will not come out to vote for you if you do not offer them something substantial that they believe will genuinely improve their lives. And Joe Biden, it was clear in this segment, genuinely does not get it. And that should scare everyone because that means going up against Donald Trump turnout will not be high enough to defeat Donald Trump. And that means Donald Trump gets to fill that Supreme Court seat that will almost inevitably be, inevitably be vacant, right? Donald Trump gets to still stack the federal judiciary. Donald Trump will remain in control during a, a COVID-19 global pandemic, which we don't know how long is going to last. And Joe Biden doesn't get it. So he may have been able to at least put on a show for people watching and appeared confident. And, you know, he didn't seem as if he was in cognitive decline like he is in actuality. But at the end of the day, he still proved he is painfully out of touch. And if if Democrats don't wake up, they'll have only themselves to blame for another four years of Donald Trump by nominating this school who's clearly not interested in, you know, solving our problems.